Hello again and welcome to another Warm 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video and today guys we are going to be talking about the content validity update that was released by Games Workshop on the 20th of April 2022. Now this may have skipped you by. I don't think there was a huge amount of fanfare around this particular update but it is a very important one. Uh, it has some implications for the Guard and it certainly has some implications for the competitive scene. Uh, and overall, I would say that from a competitive meta point of view, this is a good update. But from a sort of player community kind of point of view, it is a little bit worrying. And I could totally understand why some non Imperial Guard players out there would get a little bit peeved by this update. So what we're going to do, guys, is initially I'm going to explain what the update is. I'm going to explain the implications for the guard. And then we'll get into you know, why it's good for the state of the game. Uh, and then we'll get into a little bit of why this is a bit of a shady update. So basically, guys, basically, right, right, basically, you have got this update. And what it says is what books can still be used by which factions. Because over the course of 8th and 9th edition, Lots and lots of campaign books like Psychic Awakening and Warzone and Army of Renown and blah, 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 blah. Loads of little bits have come out. And so some people are like, what is still allowed? What isn't allowed? Games Workshop, is White Dwarf stuff still allowed? Some of it is, some of it isn't. It's got to the point now where some TOs are taking it into their own hands and there's community balance patches and all that kind of stuff. So Games Workshop went, right. Basically, we're going to sit down with a big red pen and we're going to cross out what you can't use in competitive play anymore and what you can use. And the good news for the guard is we can still use everything. So that's okay. If you go back far enough, you can't use things like Vigilus. They're not allowed anymore. But your Psychic Awakening, that's totally fine. Your Caden Supplement, that's totally fine. We didn't have any White Dwarf shit, so that's totally fine. So in terms of what this means for guard, it's like... Business as usual. Your Psychic Awakening Supplement is good to go, baby. And your Cadian Supplement is rocking on full gas. No problems whatsoever. So who really got affected by this is like Tyranids. Okay? Because Crusher Stampede, which was the white dwarf little bonus they got, which has been, even though Tyranids have got an old codex, in the face of all the crazy meta shenanigans, Crush has still been smashing people. Uh, Crush Stampede is gone, and Leviathan Supplement in in the in the Rising Tide, but the one that Arcadian one's in, Leviathan Supplement is gone. So it's kind of interesting. Like we got to keep our bit of that supplement, the Cadian bit. So the book's still good for us. But if you're a Turner player, you only bought that book six months ago. Pfft, it's gone now. Don't get to use it anymore because your new codex has come out. Now, from a competitive balance point of view, this is, is good because Guard should be allowed to keep their supplements. And it's good that we didn't... How often have we been punished for, for other factions, you know, problems? Like when it, Games Workshop of old would have just said, oh, Rising Tide supplement, it's gone. And we'd all, in all the Guard community, be like, but, 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 but Cadence were fine. And Games Workshop would have gone, ah, oh, we don't care. It's all gone. The Tyranids ruined it for you. Suck it. But Games Workshop have actually gone and done a good thing for in terms of balance and said, Cadian part of the supplement, still totally valid. Guard players, please keep using it. Go out and buy it. All that kind of good stuff if you want to use Cadians. You, we appreciate that you need that supplement and that its content is still relevant for your faction. Great. But Tyranids, sorry, you've just had a new codex. And if we let you keep the Survivor and stuff and we let you keep the Crush Stampede stuff, it's already a strong codex. You're just going to be stratospherically broken. So we're not letting you keep that stuff. Sorry, you may have, might have bought a white dwarf and you might have bought the the the, the Vath supplement part of the Rising Tide, but from a balance point of view, you can't use that. Narrative play, go nuts, do what you want, but from competitive match play, it's a big no-no. So from a balance point of view, that's really good. It's a level of nuance we've not seen. And I was a little... Harsh on Games Workshop in the previous video, though I did balance it out at the end. But in this video, I'm, I'm like saying, I'm starting with the positive. I'm saying, this level of nuance is great. I don't want to repeat myself, but in the past, they would have just, rather than using a Nerf hammer, they would have used a Nerf carpet barrage. And they would have, we would have been considered collateral damage. And the guy would have gone under, and the supplement in the, as a whole would have been taken out. And we've not seen that, so they've actually used a level of nuance, which is good. 
Games Workshop, if you're the spy that is forced to watch this channel, who I am convinced is out there, <laughs> then you take this back to HQ and say, this is a good thing. Morning Glory thinks that you did the right thing with this level of nuance. Well done. However, I am also, it has some other implications for the guard, which is between this and the buffs we've received in the last two balance patches, my theory of the guard codex may not even be out this year, seems pretty likely at this point. I mean, they've said that this is the case for until January 2023. So they've adjusted factions which have got codexes coming around the corner or have already come out, like Tyranids, and I think there's some changes around Knights and Chaos, but correct me if I'm wrong there, guys. I don't follow those factions. But they've left factions like Guard in, yeah, you, this, is, this is your update until 2023. Which makes me think that we might not get a codex this year. Because we've had two or three really big buffs between the Cadence Supplement, the last two balance patches, and now, and now this, which is allowing us to keep using you know, the Cadence Supplement and Psychic Awakening. We've been allowed to keep all our content and we've had significant buffs from the balance patch, which indicates to me our codex is nowhere near being released. I'm happy to be wrong. And if Games Workshop at this video does a weekend announcement and goes, God, are out next, then I'll be super happy to be proven wrong. I don't mind being proven wrong at that point. But from what I can understand from this, reading between the lines, uh, I don't think our codex is near, guys. So that's kind of an implication that we're still going to have to be using a lot of different bits for the for, you know going forward now why is this so that's kind of the implicate that's the balance for the meta game that's good crush stampede was was just broken crush stampede with new turns would have been broken same with leviathan so well done games workshop for having the level of nuance well done for bringing an extra layer of balance to the game i think this is a good thing from a meta point of view really good sadly i think it means guard are going to be struggling a bit but hell, at least we'll be getting free updates. That's one way of looking at it. We might not be getting our book for a while, but all the buffs that we're getting, we're not having to pay for. Cover your ears, Games Workshop guy. Cover your ears. Don't make us pay for balance data sheets. The point is, Guard are getting loads of buffs and tweaks and updates, and yeah, it's a bit of a faff because we've got to look at multiple data sheets and we've got to look around four or five books and everything, but we don't have to pay for a new codex. We're getting these buffs for free. In a funny sort of way, it's kind of a nice thing that Games Workshop's doing for us. Like, here's a buff. Don't have to wait for your codex for it. Don't have to pay for it. So whilst we're having to wait a while for our codex, at least they're buffing us for free in the meantime, right? That's good. That, that, that fosters goodwill with me. Thank you, Games Workshop. I appreciate that. However, if I was to step out of the barracks for a moment, and the Commissar may execute me for this, and I think about this from another perspective, what if I was a Tyranid player who had bought the Leviathan Supplement because... At the time of the release of that, you know, rising, you know, the Octarius Warzone Rising Tide book, Tyranids were doing about as well as Guard, aka not great, and they got the Leviathan supplement and they were like, this is a great buff, this will keep me going until my codex comes out. And you've bought it, and now Games Workshop has said, yep, less than six months later, or about six months later, you don't get to use that anymore. That wasn't a cheap book either. It was 30 quid, and don't get me wrong, it was really nice. Like the, uh, um, the pictures were great, the artwork was great, the actual sort of styling of the book, it's bigger than a normal codex, and that's it's quite nice. It was a nice aesthetic book, but 30 quid is, is gone. That's like five quid a month. That's what you that's basically what you paid for. You paid five quid a month to use that book. That's not great. That's feel badsies. And We've seen this kind of shitty behavior at the end of 7th edition. And I've been saying this for a while now, like we in 7th edition again, boys. You know, you, 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 you're you having a lovely dream and you were in 8th edition, but now you're in 9th edition, you've woke up and it's a nightmare. And it's just it's just bad shit, Maroki. Because at the end of 7th edition, Games Workshop released a book called like Heretic Legions or Traitor Legions. And it was really, really good for Chaos, because Chaos were, as always, perpetually getting screwed over by every edition they've ever been in, a bit like God. And they released this book, and six months later, they pretty hard reset it. And they were like, no, this book is no longer usable. We have released 8th edition now. 
And I know my one of the one of the games watcher managers that I know. He actually gave people loads of refunds for their Heretic Legions Trade Legions book because he was like, they you know I had loyal customers who bought this and it's literally out of print five six months later. It's it was a waste of time and people only bought it because it gave buffs to their faction. They didn't care about the law. The whole point of this book was to balance things at the end of seventh, and then they got rid of it. Why not just not release that book and we wait until eight? It was a cash grab. It was a, it, to be fair, it was a really popular cash grab because it was a really, really good book, but it had very short, it had very short lifetime. That's kind of where we're at now. It's a shitty practice. It's a shady business practice. You're releasing a book, an expensive book, which is, is thinner than a codex. It doesn't have as, anywhere near as much content as a codex. You're releasing it for two factions that you know that those communities are going to buy up those books. You know they are because they want their faction to be good. So you know people are going to buy them. And then six months later, for one of those factions, pfft, it's in the toilet. It's like, you know, getting a, buying a new codex and then having to buy it again, you know, six months later. It's like, you know, that, now you know what Marine players feel like. It's a shitty practice. It's not good for the health of the game. And I know that I have banged on about this and people who follow the channel for a while will hear this and they'll go. And I've heard other people mentioning it. Actually, funnily enough, Winters SEO mentioned it on one of his recent live streams, and he he said you know he said something that I agree with very strongly. I think when I went and we had the game with him, we chatted about this. This is what I warned about two or three years ago. There was this point in eighth edition where everyone just had one book, their codex. All the codexes had been released, or the vast vast majority. I think maybe Gene Court weren't there, but the vast majority of codexes had been released. And there was the rule book, and there was no supplements. And the balance of the game was the best it has been in a decade, if not longer. Okay, it was really, really good balance. Marines were struggling a little bit. There were a couple of other factions that were struggling a little bit, but by and large, the game was in a good place. You had some factions with a 60% win rate and some factions with a 40% win rate, but they were pretty much all between 40 and 60%. Pretty much. And it's very different now in my edition where you've got some factions on a 20% win rate and some factions, when you remove the mirror match, on an 80% win rate. That's not good for the balance of the game. That's bad. But you had this point in 8th edition where there was no supplements it was there was no extra books. It was just you had your codex and your rule book, and everyone was pretty good. Marines needed a little bit of help, but that was it. And then they released Vigilus, and the Vigilus supplement, and loads of people. You had all the famous YouTubers like Chapter Master Valrak and all that lot going online and saying, "Oh, it's okay. These aren't like the formations of old. These are more balanced. These are better." This is good for the game. It, you know, the game is getting stale, blah, 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 and, and make up all this shit, basically. And I said, this is bad. I don't care that Guard have received buffs in this book. This is Games Workshop dipping their toe back in the, in the murky waters. This is them testing the community. Because if we as a community accept this book, then Games Workshop is going to go, ooh, we can release more supplements. And the fact that this book buffed certain factions and not others, I said, you're going to very quickly have power creep. You're going to very quickly end up down back in the shitter. And I have that on record. There's a video of me saying that, okay? Lo and behold, three or four years, like two or three years later, look at where we're at with 9th edition. Supplements all over the place. Many of them, you know, getting taken out after like six months or a year, barely lasting the term. Uh, and power creep is just wacky because the community has basically accepted it as a, as a thing that happens in 40k. It doesn't have to be. We saw what it could be like back in 8th edition. We saw what it could be like. There was three months of perfect 40k. And then they fucked it. And I warned about it. And I don't want to sit here saying I told you so. But I did, I did say it. And those of you that follow the channel for a long time, hopefully, you know, you, you will be nodding along with me and going, yeah, you did say it, Morning Glory, fair enough. And many of you agreed with me and some of you disagreed with me, and that's absolutely fine. But I think we're here now, 
and I can point conclusively, without a doubt in my mind, to where it started. Over there. With vigilance. You know? Anyway, there we go. That's it. Um, hopefully that's a fairly balanced point of view. I think, like I said, for the state of the game, it's good. As a consumer practice, it's not good. You know, not great, but it is what it is. Anyway, what do you guys think down in the comment section below? Let me know what you think down there about the balance point of view. I want, you know, two types of comment. I want what you think from a balance point of view and what you think from a consumer point of view. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think? Of course, I want to say a massive thank you to the Patreon supporters. It is thanks to Patreon supporters that I am able to keep up with all these supplements and all this kind of stuff because without them, I wouldn't be able to do that. So huge thank you to the channel Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link down in the description below. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.